Thank you, Osea, for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Osea's Ocean Eyes Age Defying Eye Serum has been my go-to skincare product for a while now. This eye serum brightens and awakens while reducing the look of lines, dark circles, and puffiness under my eyes. Ocean Eyes key ingredients are seaweed, bark and plant extract, peptide, quinoa, and hyaluronic acid. When it comes to using the Ocean Eyes Serum, gently roll and massage from the inner corner and outer corner of the under eye area. This serum can be applied morning and night. Also be sure to check out the new Advanced Repair Eye Cream. This eye cream smooths the appearance of wrinkles and crow's feet while reducing the look of dark circles and under eye bags and puffiness. You can use the eye cream morning and night and for best anti-aging results, layer over with Ocean Eyes Age Defying Eye Serum. If you would like to try out any of these products, be sure to check out the link below. You can also use the coupon code KIRAOCEAN for 10% off your order. Thanks again to Osea for supporting the channel. Thoughts on people who move back home in order to save money. I think it's the smartest thing to do. If you have the opportunity to move back home and it's a safe environment, do so. Do not care about what others are going to think of you, especially if you are coming from your first apartment then you're going to move back home. I know the feeling might be a little daunting and it might be a little questionable when it comes to you want your own freedom, you want to be able to, you know, do what you want to do and not be around your parents all the time. I totally get that. I didn't move out of my mom's apartment until I was 26 and a half and I'm glad I waited that long. I remember people telling me like, Kira, you're still with your mom? Why are you still with your mom at this age and I just wasn't ready I wasn't ready to just move out and start paying everything on my own because my mindset was still very young I was hanging out with the wrong crowd I was partying a lot and if I was to move out just because everybody else was telling me to I would have just gotten myself in so much debt unnecessary debt all because of wanting to look cool or following the typical American standards where it's like you move out at 18. But moral of the story, if you have the opportunity to move back home with your parents in order to get out of credit card debt, save up for a decent car, not a luxury car, just a decent car, or you want to help out your family more along with help out yourself with savings, or you just want to be able to be debt free, save money and buy a house. Having that option to move back home is so big you guys and do not miss that opportunity to make your life better. A lot of people don't think of this but finances play a huge role in your future. And if you do not learn the value of a dollar, you're constantly in credit card debt, you're going to have a very very hard time in life to get ahead. So like I said, if you have the opportunity to move back home, do it. Who cares what everybody thinks? Who cares about getting judged for living with your parents? Who cares? The only thing you should care about is yourself. Obviously help your parents out while you're living there. Do not be selfish, but definitely focus on learning the value of a dollar and getting yourself out of debt or just learning how to save in the comfort of your parents' house. There's no need to follow the typical American standards where it's like, oh, once when you turn 18, then you move out. If I was to move out when I was 18, I would have been struggling so bad because I didn't know the value of a dollar. I was still very materialistic and my priorities were all messed up. So I'm glad and I'm so thankful for my mom for letting me stay with her until I was 26 and a half. And even though she always questioned like, why aren't you moving out? What's going on? She never judged me for living with her. Um, I mean, towards the end, she was like, are you gonna live with me until you're 30? And I was like, I don't know, but I did move out. And I'm glad that I moved out with a strong mentality on how to save money and where not to spend my money. Best tip for paying off credit card debt. So I'm no Caleb Hammer or I'm no Graham Stephan, but I do know a thing or two when it comes to credit card debt, the best tip that you can ever do when it comes to paying it off fast. So say for example, you have five credit cards, figure out the one credit card within those five that have the highest interest rate. That's the one you wanna pay off first and then work on the other ones. Sharing accounts or separate accounts. I think separate accounts work great and also you can have a joint account. So. I don't think it's a good idea to sh have one savings account where everyone shares in the household or like with your partner. 
I think everyone should have their own separate accounts. And then, like I said, you can have a joint account. So for my boyfriend and I, I have my own savings. I have my own check-in. And he also has his own savings and check-ins. But then we also have a joint account. Even though we haven't been putting any money in our joint account because we're trying to build up our savings, our personal savings, it is always a good thing to have your own account because you never know the future and it's good to have your own money. It's not being selfish, it's being smart with your money. Because even though you're in a relationship with someone and you do love them, you do have to think of yourself too. You can't just forget about yourself and just focus on that one person. You have to think about yourself and that person. So it's best to do both. Have your own savings and check-in and also have a joint account for your relationship. How do you stay focused on your savings goal? The one thing that worked for me, and I know this is going to sound silly, and I have talked about it here and there on my channel, is try to do math. Every time you want to spend money on an item, like say you make $10 an hour, and the shirt or the perfume you want is like $50, you're going to have to work five hours, five long hours for that perfume and shirt that you might not really want. You just want it because it's either in style, because in reality, you might have a closet filled with clothes or you might already have a perfume collection. So technically you're just wasting money or you're stealing money from yourself because it's going to put you back. Because if you were to spend that $50, now you have to come up with that $50 again and more because you were already supposed to save that $50. I hope I'm making sense. It's so hard for me to put this in words. I know a lot of other YouTubers do a better job at this, but when it came to me on like sticking with my savings goal, I realized that some of the purchases that I was making back then were putting me back. So say for an example, back in 2015, I bought 10 things off of Amazon and then I spent like a hundred bucks. That hundred bucks could have easily went to my savings and could have built up my savings account faster. But since I took that hundred dollars out to buy pointless things off Amazon, now I'm behind a hundred dollars and more because I was supposed to already save that hundred. So yeah, I know it's a little complicated, but I hope you guys kind of get what I'm saying. It all comes down to math and realizing like what you don't need and what you need. And that's how I stick with a, my savings goal. Do not get me wrong. I make mistakes sometimes. Even with me being a minimalist, I still make mistakes when it comes to money. But I always try my best to make that money up and learn from that mistake that I made with buying something or, you know, just putting myself behind when it comes to my savings goal. Like, so when it comes to building my savings account, I have to be very, very careful on what I spend money on and what I don't spend my money on because that's going to dictate on how much money I'm able to put in my savings account. I know a lot of information, but it takes a long time to learn how to focus on your savings goal and not focus on like, oh, I want that shirt that she has. I want the shoes that she has. It does take time. So try not to be too hard on yourself. Like I said, I still make mistakes till this day. Do you stockpile? If so, what do you stock up on? Um, I wouldn't say like I fully stockpile, but I always have backups of certain things like my conditioner and shampoo. I always have a backup soap, like the um, Dove unscented soap bars. We have a ton of backups on those. Like just the main essentials I stock up on. If you guys want me to do like a vlog explaining everything or showing everything that we stock up on, let me know. I wouldn't say they're like huge stockpiles because it's just my boyfriend and I. So yeah. It's just enough to get us through like the next month or a couple months. How do you cope with financial anxiety and feeling pressure to help your family and your own personal finances at the same time? I go through this anxiety like every so amount of months because I think of my mom, my mom the most. I have a very, very small family. I don't have any aunts, uncles. I don't have cousins. I just have my mom. I will say her health and her finances scare me the most. My mom has been through a lot. Um, and this is why I tell you guys, like I don't really share much about my childhood because it is very, very traumatic um, with both sides of the family. More of my dad's side is more traumatic than what happened with uh, me and my sisters and my mom. So needless to say, my mom's health scares the crap out of me. 
but she is getting better. She exercises a lot more now. Um, she does go to her doctor's appointments. She does not smoke, like no cigarettes. She hasn't had a cigarette since she was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2017. She is working on her health, but the health issues are always gonna be there because of how much damage she did to her body when she was younger. Um, and I'm talking like when she was in her 20s, 30s, and 40s. My mom is, my mom's gonna be 53 in July. So she's still relatively young, but um, it's always in the back of my head is her health and her finances. Her finances are not the best and I try my best to help her. But when it comes to helping someone, whether it's a family member or friend or stranger, in order to help that person with their finances or help them in general, that person needs to want to help themselves before receiving help. And it bothers me because I wish I could help her out more. But you guys know the kind of money I make. I'm still trying to build this YouTube career and stuff. And it is really hard to try to take care of your little family that you have. And then also try to take care of your mom and dad. So I'm constantly thinking about like retirement for her. Like how is it going to look like? Like am I the one that's going to help her out more? Because my other sisters are not that smart with money either so and i'm not judging like everyone's different i don't want to brag either but i am um the smartest when it comes to what not to spend your money on what to spend your money on always have a savings account and i constantly put this in um, my mom's head and also my sister's not having an emergency fund is an emergency so it does create some financial anxiety when it comes to never feeling like it's enough such as like putting money away in my emergency fund and then when we have kids putting money away for their college fund and then you got to think of you know our future house if it needs work done and then out of all of that stuff you got to see if there's money left over to see if you can help out your parent or your parents so it definitely dawns on me i know this was a long answer but I struggle with this a lot, a lot more ever since I turned 30 and I just feel like time is flying by like before I know it my mom will be retired and I just hope that she's saving up for that. But needless to say I am extremely worried sometimes like I have a lot of anxiety regarding her finances and her health because my income is enough for the little family I have here right now and then to put some money in my savings account for a house so when it comes to my mom I'm constantly thinking like when will I have enough for her I want to take care of her because my boyfriend right now is also helping his mom when it comes to like her helping her become self-employed um, so we're constantly thinking of our moms and like the future and stuff even though we have our own stuff to deal with too so it's it's a lot it's a lot for me to explain so i guess like the short answer is i don't know how to cope with financial anxiety regarding like like how to help a family member i haven't figured that out yet but when i do i'll let you guys know how do you budget to do fun things so as of right now we do not budget fun things because we are on a freaking mission when it comes to buying our future home and luckily we do live in boston so there's a lot of free meetups and like free concerts but sometimes we want to go out and we don't want to spend money so what we do is like we'll look on um, my boyfriend has an app i forgot what the app is called but even if you don't have the app you can like google like free events in boston or free events in new york or wherever city or next closest city you're next to um yeah so we just go to free events and when we do drive we take my boyfriend's car because his car is amazing on gas mine isn't so mine always just stays parked in the parking lot so his car is a four cylinder mine is a v6 so we take his car when we go to these free events because four cylinders are 10 times better on gas so that's kind of how we <laughs> have fun lately um there was a time where we were going to dave and busters and just paying ten dollars to play air hockey for like an hour that's another thing but um like i said we are very tight with our money these days so we just do free events if we have the time to go out or we want to go out saving plan for kids how will you go about college i get this question so much i have no idea because i am not ready to be a mom i know that's alarming to some people because of my age but we do plan on having a savings account for our future kids i'm just not sure like how that works um, because I would like to get them their own 
But then I've heard rumors that like you cannot get a baby a savings account. So I have to do more research. Well, we have to do more research on that. But best believe once when I deliver our first child, whenever that is, that baby will be having its own savings account. But if they prefer to do something else with that money, um, then we would definitely give it to them. I mean, it has to make sense though. They can't just spend it on a bunch of clothes and shoes. It has to go towards something for their future or something that's going to help their future. Yeah, we're definitely gonna be strict parents when it comes to what they have in their savings fund. I know they're gonna hate us for it, but they'll thank us later on. How to stop negative thoughts when it comes to money. This is something that I am learning how to not do anymore. I am the most, well, I was the most negative person ever. So for me, with thinking negative constantly, it was creating this like dark cloud over my head. And I don't know if it was the energy and the universe just throwing more negative things at me. But ever since I started to think more positive about my income and just about my life, things have been changing do not get me wrong i get my days where i'm still sad and i will just try my best to either take a nap or just shut down my mind and, and not verbally say like i suck at life or my life is horrible so when it comes to those bad days i do not speak those negative things in existence anymore I'm um, just a lot more positive and I think it also has to do with the kind of content that I have been consuming. I've been watching a lot of positive channels and also listening to a lot of um, positive like podcasts on how to succeed and things like that. So that's kind of how I stop my negative thoughts is trying to replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts. And I know it's easy said than done, but best believe I was heading towards a very dark path. I was like ready to just quit YouTube. I was ready to delete my channel. I was even on the delete channel button and my boyfriend talked me out of it. And I was like, I'm just gonna go do dietary aid. I'm done with YouTube. And this was like a couple months ago. And we sat down, we had a heavy talk, I cried, and things started to pick up like two to three weeks after that episode, the negative episode, when I started to consume more positive content. So anyways, that's how I deal with my negative thoughts. I try to replace them with positive thoughts. How do you deal with FOMO while saving money? If you don't know what FOMO is, I actually had to Google it myself. I think I'm getting old, but it means fear of missing out. I used to deal with this before I even knew what FOMO meant. Back when I was 26, when, uh, well, yeah, was I 20? I think it was like 26 or 25. I stopped talking to the friends that I had. I stopped going out. So basically my life changed drastically. I went from being surrounded and having somewhat fun every night to staying at home at my mom's or working all the time and i kid you not you guys when the sun was out and like i used to like hate when the sun was out and when it was like a nice weather because i felt like i was missing out if i was at work i looked outside and i'm like damn it's such nice weather i feel like everybody's out and i'm stuck at work that was all in my freaking head there was no such thing as like me missing out because in reality there will be other nice days there will be days where you have to work. There will be days where it's a nice day and you have the day off of work, but you just wanna stay inside. So the scenario is always changing. And I'm telling you, you guys, when I was younger, I felt all the time that I was missing out, especially when it was nice days. And now that I'm older, I laugh about it because I think like, all right, there's always going to be some kind of nice day. I mean, it's 365 days in the year. There's going to be another nice day and there's going to be another day where you can go have fun or go do what you want to do. So if you are feeling a little bit of FOMO while saving money, your fun days will come back to you. You're going to thank yourself in the long run when you have a nice decent amount of money saved and then you can go have some fun with your friends. Trust me, if they're real friends, then they will wait for you. So do not feel like your life is going to end if you do not go to that party today. There will always be another party. There will always be another shopping day. There will, there will always be another day, basically. Do you use Apple Pay? I do not. I'm old school, you guys. Like, I haven't got into the Apple Pay or anything like that. My boyfriend likes it. He doesn't have an Apple card. He just uses his phone when we, like, cash out at the grocery store and stuff. For me, I just swipe my credit card still. 
I know, I know, I'm showing my age, but I, I don't know, I, I just, I don't get into like the high tech stuff until like later, later on. So I, I am a little late bloomer when it comes to like tech things. For a quick little example, I know I'm talking a lot in this video, I'm just a little talkative today, but with the cameras that I own, like my DSLR and this uh, vlog camera, all I know how to do is press the on button, press the record, and that's it. I do not know anything else, and it's very, very technical, like with these, cameras I let my boyfriend figure it out like my boyfriend is a genius with ca cameras and whenever I have a problem I go straight to him <laughs> so yeah I'm not the best with like tech gadgets anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this money talk let me know down below if you want part four I think this is part three so let me know down below if you want me to do a part four I absolutely love chatting with you guys thank you guys for spending some time with me and I will catch you in the next video Thank you.